Namaste, viewers. I am Rekha Rao from India, a researcher in ancient history and archaeology. Welcome to the course on the fundamentals of Indian temple architecture. This is the final topic of an eight-part series. In this topic, we will study how the science of herbal medicines called Ayurveda was depicted in Indian temple sculptures. Many Indian temples have sculptures of beautiful women with trees classified as semi-divine figures. These figures are called shalabhanjikas and are often seen standing by the side of a tree and embracing the flowering branch. The depiction of trees were not just decorative motifs, but also a realistic picture of a variety of trees highlighting the leaf and flower structure precisely. In this topic, we will explore why such figures were in Indian temples and what message they intended to convey. We will study why the science of medicinal plants got associated with female figures. We will then explore five examples of medicinal plants depicted in temple architecture. In slide one, we see three pictures of how semi-divine figures embracing the tree branch are shown in different temples from different time periods. The first figure is from Rajarani temple of 11th century CE in Northeast India. The middle picture depicts a zoomed version of the semi-divine figure that is placed high on the outer wall of this temple. The third picture depicting a similar theme is from a temple in Andhra Pradesh of South India. The well-adorned female figures holding the branch of a tree are called as Shalabhanjikas. Shala in Sanskrit means a tree and Bhanjika means a doll, together meaning a puppet under a tree. These enchanting figures were placed at a higher level of the temple wall. Interestingly, such figures were part of Indian temple architecture and Buddhist stupas right from 3rd century BCE to a much later period until 16th century CE. Now let's explore why such figures were part of temple architecture. Indian temples are monuments that incorporate many branches of science along with religion. One such branch dealing with herbal medicines was called Ayurveda and was practiced right from ancient Vedic civilization dating back to approximately 5,000 years. The Vedas have revered trees as mothers with divine status because they, they are relievers of pain, restorers of health, and bear the strengthening sap in them for very long periods. The belief was that when a young woman touches the tree, it blooms profusely. This concept was conveyed through the association of a female figure with trees in temple sculptures. Now, let us explore five examples of such medicinal trees in temple architecture. Slide two has three pictures. The first picture is that of a round bunch of flowers from the Ashoka tree. The second picture depicts a figure holding the branch of Ashoka flowers in her right hand as she entwines her left arm around the stem of the tree. The third picture is a zooped version of the flower bunches from the second figure. This panel is from Barhut Stupa of second to first century BCE in central India. Ashoka tree has medicinal values that reduce menstrual pains and is therefore called a practical woman's tonic. The bark extract is also analgesic, anti-abortive, antibacterial and diuretic. It is a sedative for pain of ovarian tissues and uterine muscles. Ashoka flower buds were consumed with the hope of conception. Hence, this tree is recurrently depicted as semi-divine figure in Indian temples and stupas. Let's now look at another example in slide three. The sculpture in the first picture is that of a woman holding the branch of a tree called Nagakesa in her right hand and a flower bunch near the pubic region with her left hand. The middle picture is the zoomed part with flower and the structure of globular woody fruit. The third picture is the four petal flowers, which are distinctly depicted in the zoomed picture. 
Nagakesar is well known medicinal plant that is widely used in indigenous medicine to heal burns and skin diseases. It's a powerful expectorant and an astringent that contracts the tissues and canals, thereby diminishing the discharge of mucus or blood. The tree bark acts as a tonic and is used after childbirth to cure anemia and to heal ulcers. Oil from the seed of this plant has anti rheumatic properties. Coming to slide four, we see the first picture showing the sculptured panel of women with orchids, also known as Vandaka plant. This panel is from Ramapa Temple of South India, a UNESCO World Heritage Monument. Actual photographs of the orchid and its flowers are also presented. The plant grows in a single central axis and flowers appear in lateral branches. The leaves are opposite to each other as depicted in the panel of Ramapa temple. Orchids are pleasantly perfumed flowers blooming in the inflorescence of various colors. They are commonly used in aromatherapy. Orchid pots produce vanilla bean, which is not only a flavor enhancer, but also used as a natural remedy for cough, lung, kidney, and stomach diseases. Orchid bulbs are also believed to be powerful aphrodisiacs and used as a fertility medicine. The consumption of smaller bulbs is believed to promote the formation of a female child, while larger bulbs promote a male baby. Orchids were a favorite plant of women folk throughout history. Now let us look into some fruit bearing trees. Slide five has two pictures. The first picture shows a sculpture of a divine figure holding the branch of a type of crusted apple called Ram Phal. This panel is from Barhut Stupa railing that belongs to second to first century BCE. An actual picture of the Ram Phal fruit and its long leaves is presented to the right, which are well depicted in the sculpture. Ramphal is a type of custard apple, a sugary fruit. It is a rich source of minerals like magnesium and potassium and helps to relieve acid accumulation in joints. Vitamin C in the fruit helps to dilate blood vessels in high cholesterol and high blood pressure cases and further regulates the conditions. It is known to enhance the immunity system of the body due to vitamin C content. Rampal helps to reduce the risk of developing cardiovascular problems. The intention of displaying a female semi-divine figure with these fruits is probably to send a message about protecting the plant, to grow more of its kind and to consume the fruits for their nutritional value. In slide six, we study a sculpture of semi-divine figure with a medicinal fruit called noni, also known as Indian mulberry. The sculpture is from Rajarani temple of 11th century CE from Eastern India. The figure in the sculpture is shaking the tree branch with a pleasant smile. The zoom part of the first picture in the middle of the slide six shows her smile and the fruits. An actual picture of noni fruit is also provided. The tree is identifiable by noni by its long branch of leaves and potato sized fruits. The Sanskrit name for noni fruit is ashuka, which means longevity. This fruit is used to treat various ailments. The ripe fruit with many seeds has pungent odor and is hence called the cheese fruit for this, for this reason. The slimy pulp is sweetish sour. In Ayurvedic usage, the juice of the fruit is gargled to relieve sore throat. The fruit is also used to treat uterine hemorrhage, edema, and cough. Noni plant is a rich source of phytonutrients and boosts the immune system as it has anti-inflammatory, antiviral, antibacterial compounds. Various fruit beverages are made of this fruit, rich in mineral contents like iron, calcium, potassium, and sodium. Let's now summarize the key learning from this topic. Indian temples had sculptures of semi-divine for which with a variety of trees and flowers. 
These figures were not just decorative motifs, but also depicted a realistic picture of variety of trees, highlighting the leaf and flower structure precisely. These figures prove that Indian temples had incorporated Ayurvedic medicinal plants as part of its architectural creations. They inform the public community about the importance of these medicinal trees and flowers and how they could be used to improve the health and well-being of people. Thank you. I hope that you enjoyed this introductory course on the fundamentals of Indian temple architecture. <laughs>